Apple and Google's deal yesterday was a landmark announcement for iPhone owners and the AI ecosystem at large. The companies announced that new versions of Siri will use Google's Gemini under the hood. Our Apple and Google reporters were both working the phones all day yesterday trying to figure out how exactly the deal will work behind the scenes. I want to bring them on to talk about it. This is Aaron Tilly, our Apple reporter, and Aaron Wu, our Google reporter. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you both here. Thanks for having us. The Aaron and Aaron Show. Once again, we're missing Aaron Holmes, as usual. I'm waiting for the the, the, the trio segment. Um, Aaron Tilly, let's start with you. How is this deal going to work behind the scenes from what we know? Yeah, so basically Apple is allowed to take these uh, Google models, the Gemini models, and adapt it for its own purposes so it can tweak it and um, do what it needs to do behind the scenes to get it working on Apple products, Apple features like Siri. So it's really incorporating Gemini as if it will be an internal model. So it's not going to be routing out to Google servers. It's it's going to be incorporated like as if it's an internal sort of model that Apple's using for its features. And remind us timeline-wise, when are we expecting the new Siri to come out again? Um, so Apple's continually delayed it over the past uh, you know, almost two years now. And they've said this year is the year they'll finally kind of come out with what they initially promised in summer of 2024. And we understand there'll be some um, releases in the spring and that they will then um, announce kind of a more full-fledged uh, AI in the summer at their Worldwide Developers Conference. Aaron Wu, do we know how much Google is paying Apple here at all? Yeah, actually, in this situation, Apple is paying Google, and we don't totally know. Oh, sorry. Uh, right. My bad. Apple yeah. is paying. My, that's what I meant. How much is <laughs> Apple paying Google? <laughs> right. Apple is paying Google. So yesterday, the two companies released a joint statement that did not get into any of the terms of the deal. So we don't 100% know. Bloomberg reported last fall that Apple is paying Google $1 billion annually. Um, a source with knowledge of the agreement yesterday told me that the number could be way bigger than that. So this is definitely a win for Google from a monetary perspective. And I wonder how you think, Aaron Wu, about this from the context of Google now has this deal with Apple. Google obviously has the Samsung ecosystem and its whole Android uh, operating platform as well. I mean, it just strikes me that they obviously would integrate Gemini into that ecosystem. And so now they, they really have the market cornered in terms of what I think are the top two distribution ways for, for hardware, right? Yeah, I mean, they're really quartering the market essentially on mobile devices. Um, so they've got this deal with Apple. They've also got a deal with Samsung. Last week, the Samsung co-CEO said that they plan to increase the number of devices running Gemini to 800 million to like double the number of devices running Gemini. So Gemini there, like there's the Gemini consumer app and there's also Gemini powers Galaxy AI, which is like a lot of AI features on Samsung phones. So essentially, like Google in a lot of ways has the kind of distribution that OpenAI is really trying to get via creating these mobile devices. Like Google already has essentially the mobile devices. Aaron Tilly, one of the interesting parts of what you were reporting on was the privacy element of the data here. I know that when Apple intelligence was announced, I mean, privacy was a big thing that they highlighted and they had their, that whole private cloud server business. I, I don't understand how it works, but I remember them saying something to the effect of, don't worry, the data is still sort of private to your device and, or maybe you have a private cloud. Is any of that changing with these models here? How does it work with Siri? Uh, yeah, so none of those plans are changing at all uh, because the way they're incorporating these Gemini models, like incorporating them as if they're Apple AI models, they will look completely uh, like they said earlier, where all the AI processing will happen either on device or in their private cloud system. And with their private cloud system, they promise they're not using that data to train their algorithms further. It's all, uh, it's all just... Uh, um, processed anonymously, not attached to a user. So it, you know, they, they say this, the, you know, through the, how they're incorporating Gemini, it'll, it'll, it'll continue to, you know, pri promise that privacy. And so sticking with you, Aaron Tilly, what happens to the deal with OpenAI? 
Um, that's still in place. Um, you know, the deals were pretty different. Uh, the the deal with with OpenAI, it 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 sort of links out to OpenAI. When you ask Siri a certain way, if you ask Siri a question a certain way, it will sometimes link out to OpenAI, including putting a prompt window saying, "Do you want to go to OpenAI?" So that still exists. It's just like it'll become even less and less relevant as you know the Siri can answer these questions itself more and more with a, a Gemini. Uh, helping it mm. Aaron Wu I, I I'm sort of thinking back to all of these antitrust cases that Google was fighting and I seem to remember the judge having said something to the effect of the AI the AI has changed the game entirely and you know when we were thinking about whether or not Google needed to sell Chrome the judge said, Hey, it's a totally different world than a couple of years ago when these, you know, uh, antitrust lawsuits may have originally been filed. That was at a time when ChatGPT was ahead <laughs> in the race uh, against Gemini, and it still is ahead. I, I think based on the numbers, but here you have Google again doing big deals with Apple. Do people in your orbit talk about how quickly the game has changed and how? somewhat ironic it is that that was one of the reasons that the judge ruled the way that it did? Yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely been an insane like vibe shift in the past few months where everyone's really bullish about on Google now. A lot of people are saying like, oh, like a lot of the doubt was misplaced and we've seen them really come from behind in the past few months, in the past year to either have models that are at least on par, if not better than what OpenAI is doing. And Google is still behind it when it comes to chatbot distribution, like a, a, um, according to all of the numbers that we have. But Google also has all of these other distribution channels, like Google has search, Google has all of these other products that it's like increasingly putting Gemini in. And to your point with these distribution deals, in some ways they're following a very similar playbook with search, which is getting searched on Apple, getting searched on Android. Again, what came out in the remedies ruling was that Google isn't allowed to essentially tie the installment of Gemini to other apps. So they can't say like, oh, if you want to have maps or if you want to have YouTube, you also have to have Gemini. And so there's some stuff in the remedies ruling that's hopefully going to prevent Google from using similar illegal monopolistic techniques to distribute Gemini. But it's obvious that they have these relationships with Samsung, they have these relationships with Apple. And so they're also continuing to leverage them to get the AI on these devices. And again, like the the models are good now. So it's it's not as if these companies are taking like an inferior model because of their existing and relationship. Just simplify, simplify what you were saying here for us for a second. The distribution deals. So remind us here. So uh, the map stuff, what was, what was the deal then? I just want to understand it. Okay. So basically what was ruled to be monopolistic was that Google was making exclusive distribution deals with partners like phone manufacturers, mobile carriers, et cetera. And they would and they would condition having other apps on condition on having search. So like if you want to have these other apps, for example, the Android Play, Play Store without which right. basically these games are useless, like you also need to have search. And so right now in these deals, as far as we know, they're not exclusive. They don't condition having any other apps on having Gemini. So as far as we know, Google is complying with the terms of right. Gemini. In, in other words, you can you can have an app that doesn't use Gemini. It's not like it's the only way that that app is, is going to work type of thing. Got it. Great. Well, uh, it is um, an exciting deal, and I want to thank you both for coming on to help us make sense of it. That is Aaron Wu, our Google reporter, and Aaron Tilly, our Apple reporter, here at The Information.